Hi everyone. How do we know that this graph represents y as a function of x? Uh, here's Desmos. Uh, y equals, you could put sqrt for square root and put the x in there. Uh, or y equals, you could go to the keyboard in the lower left, the keypad. Uh, here's square root and put the x that way. Right. The down arrow to close it. Right. But how do we know that this graph, I'll zoom out, how do we know that this graph represents y as a function of x. It's because it passes the vertical line test, the VLT, not BLT, VLT. <laughs> so what does the vertical line test say? A graph or a curve in the xy plane passes the vertical line test, the VLT, if and only if there is no vertical line that intersects the graph more than once. So if we do not get something like this, we're not allowed to have a situation where one x-coordinate yields two points with two different y-coordinates. We're not allowed to have one x-value from the domain yield two different y-values. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. Because if this were to happen, that's like if you punch in three into a calculator, press a button, and the calculator says, oh, I don't know. The answer could be seven. It could be uh, negative pi. The function value could be 14 or 42. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go get a VLT. <laughs> then that would not be a function. We would not have y as a function of x. If you have one x value in the domain, you're going to get y, sorry, one y value in the range. And that's it. So take a look at this square root graph. When we look at these various vertical lines, okay, this vertical line hits no points, that's okay. Uh, you're not allowed to take the square root of a negative number for now. If you try to take the square root of negative one, then your calculator will say error. That just means that these values, like negative one, are not in the domain of the function. That's okay. So zero points, zero points, zero points. These are values that are not in the domain of f. But then, one point, one point, one point, one point, for each of these x values, here in the non-negative values of uh, x, we do get exactly one y value. The graph does pass the VLT. This graph does represent y as a function of x. Now, here we have an equation that does not represent y as a function of x. x squared plus y squared equals 9. And try to remember, what was the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 9? Remember that? x squared plus y squared equals 9. It's a circle of radius 3, not 9, radius 3, starting at the origin. Does this graph pass the VLT? Absolutely not. For example, x equals 2, cuts the graph in two points, x equals 0, cuts the graph in two points, and so forth. So if you plug in x equals 2, okay, it turns out that, uh, that both y equals root 5 and y equals negative root 5 will work in conjunction with x equals 2 to solve this. More easily, if you plug in x equals 0, then y equals positive 3 and y equals negative 3 will correspond to points on the graph. For example, 0, 3 lies on the graph. 0, 3 lies on the graph. But then that means that we're failing the vertical line test because we see at least one vertical line that cuts the graph in more than one point. Again, this is like saying uh, if we input 0, we're getting outputs of 3 and negative 3. And a function is not allowed to do that. Another way to see this is to take the equation x squared plus y squared equals 9 and try to solve this for y, to try to get an explicit form, y is a function of x. We'll try it, and this is very instructive. Let's solve x squared plus y squared equals 9 for y. All right, let's do this. So first off, let's isolate the y squared term. How would we do that? 
we would do what with the x squared? We would subtract it from both sides. So we take x squared plus y squared equals nine and we subtract x squared from both sides. So on the left side, we're left with the y squared term. On the right side, we have nine minus x squared. Now we're going to apply the square root method. I'll give you a hint. Let's say that we had a squared equals seven. If a squared equals seven, what could a itself be? Don't just say the square root of seven, it could be plus or minus the square root of seven. I'll put this in red to really emphasize that. It's plus or minus the square root of seven. So likewise, what's equivalent to y squared equals nine minus x squared? It's y equals plus or minus the square root of nine minus x squared. But then it should be evident that if you plug in values like x equals zero or x equals two, you're going to get two different values for y. For example, if you plug in x equals zero, you're going to get both positive three and negative three as values for y. So this is another way of seeing that we do not have y as a function of x, at least not directly, not explicitly. But hold on now, when you look at this circle, when you look at this circle, isn't it true that there are pieces of this circle that pass the vertical line test? That leads to the idea of implicit functions. So even though as it stands, this circle does not represent y as a function of x, this does lead to infinitely many implicit functions that correspond to pieces of the graph that do. So for example, remember that x squared plus y squared equals nine is equivalent to this over here. How would I get the top half of the circle? What would you enter into Desmos to get the top half of that circle? You would take y equals straight up root nine minus x squared. You delete the plus minus. Let's do that. So on Desmos, let's have it graph y equals the square root of nine minus, whoops, nine minus x, shift six for the exponent, two. Look at that. We have the upper half of that circle. And this graph does pass the VLT. That indicates that y equals root nine minus x squared does express y explicitly as a function of x. Well, likewise, how do we get the bottom half? We take y equals the opposite. We take that sort of minus sign there. We take y equals the opposite of root nine minus x squared. Let's do that. Y equals the opposite of root nine, min oops, nine minus x squared. Uh, just to be safe, I put parentheses. And we get in black, the bottom half of the circle. So in principle, you could, you could get the whole circle by combining the purple graph and the black graph. Both of, the, both of these are implicit functions from the original equation up here. The idea of implicit functions does come up in calculus because we might be interested in slopes of tangent lines, rates of change. Okay, so we get the upper half of this circle from this equation. Remember this form because we'll see it in 1.3. And also we graph this equation to get the bottom half of the circle. We get the endpoints as well. Next, given a graph, estimate domain, range, and function values from a good graph. 